Just a few weeks ago on McLean's TV, we had Arma All-Star Stephen McDonald giving his views of some of the qualifiers. Delighted to say, joined this week by Paddy Bradley, Dre All-Star. Paddy, we've got four superb qualifiers coming up this weekend. Let's try and take our, our put our expert view on the four of them. First up, Longford Wexford. What are your thoughts, sir? Yeah, it's going to be four very close games, uh, particularly this one. Now, I suppose last year Derry went down to Longford, so and we lost down there, so I know how, how difficult a place is to go, Pierce Park. Uh, Longford, you know, are very, very good at home. Wexford have been going fairly well this year. They've good forwards in Kieran Ling, Ben Brosnan and these guys, so they're going to pose plenty of problems. But for me, Longford with home advantage could just shade that one. Uh, move on then to obviously the all Leinster clash. Louth are away to Kildare. Kildare are certainly chastened after their uh, performance or lack of performance against Dublin. It's a big, big game for Kieran McGinney. Well, you said it was the lack of performance against Dublin. I watched that game on TV, and to be truthful, if Dublin had took their goal chances, there might have been 25 or 30 points in that. It's very disappointing because they're considering that probably they had targeted the Leinster Championship, and in particular that Dublin game this year. Uh, Louth under Aidan O'Rourke went fairly well in Division 2 they had a good victory against uh, Leash in the, in the uh, Leinster Championship disappointed again Wexford uh, but they got back to one on ways so it's going to be a ver another very close game the big thing there is how will they recover after the, the slaughtering they got from Dublin I think they have enough experience there and I do think that they have still enough uh, potential to get to at least an all Ireland quarter final so I think Kildare with home advantage could shade that one no, they seem to almost uh, they almost seem to have gone back would that be fair is that cruel I think it's more a case that they're trying that hard and I had heard in the lead up uh, until the Dublin game they had played actually you know a club team in a friendly and they tried a new defensive system so to me they, maybe they don't know what tactics they should use or what tactics are best for them um, you know Kieran obviously has done a, a, a decent job with them he's got them you know to the other in quarter final and semi final on a number of occasions so he's doing rightly with them but for them to push on do they have the players I, I don't know uh, I do but think that they have enough quality you know in their panel to go on a run in the qualifiers and get to at least an all Ireland quarter final when they get there they're good enough to go and beat one of the big three or four teams I don't think so Right, move on then to uh, Leitrim against Armagh, and of course uh, Armagh, Paul Grimley took a lot of abuse from one of your former players, Joe Brawley from Derry, as a, an RTE pundit, but uh, they've responded, now they're into this round of the qualifiers, but they're away to Leitrim, and before anybody thinks this is easy, even though Leitrim were beaten by London, Leitrim beat Armagh by 10 points in a friendly a few weeks ago. That's right, and I will know the Leitrim strength and conditioning coach, Ollie Cummins. He's, a, he's actually a Lamavadi man, he's a dairy man, he's the boy I worked with during my rehab from a, from a cruciate injury. So, you know, I've been listening to him all year and he's telling me how well Leitrim are going, but a big blow for them, I suppose, before the, the Connacht semi final was the fact that there was four boys dropped off the panel for, for discipline problems. And, you know, to be honest, in, in the two games versus London, Leitrim didn't play any in the first half. They did come back both days with good comebacks, but they fell short. You've got to worry about Leitrim's form, even though they did beat Armagh in a friendly, you've got to worry about the form if they can't you know, overturn London at, at home. So Armagh coming off the back of a you know, a morale boosting victory, you know, emphatic one over Wicklow, you know, Jamie Clark was back on the boil, you know, scored was two, two four, two five. You know, you've got to say that you think Armagh will go down to Leitrim and get a result down there and I think it'll be four or five points at least in that one. And Paul Grimley would be happy, all right, another one the eye for you for our pal Joe. Well this is it. <laughs> I listened to Paul after, you know, the the Wicklow game he was interviewed about it and he you know, he was very adamant that he wasn't going to let, I suppose, let things lie, and you know, he did take a lot of criticism, all warranted criticism, in my opinion. He's there to do his best, and look, I think he, you know, Armart, they're you know top six, seven side, but they're not a bad side, and I think that they'll have a big uh, say in the qualifiers thus far. And I know that the likes of Throne and Derry and these teams won't want to draw them in the next round if they do beat Leitrim. Now we move on to the last qualifier this weekend, Calvin from Anna and Derry last week went through the same thing. They lost to down the first round of the championship, then they got them again, and obviously we had the reverse result with Derry beating them. Calvin from Anna, do you think from Anna could go down to Calvin and maybe get their reverse result against uh, Terry Highland side? I do think they can. I, it's uh, you know it's just the way the qualifiers are and. You know, teams drawn a, a team that they beat for the second time. It, it's not easy. I was chatting to Benny Coulter there on Monday, and you know he was saying that it was very, very hard to lift the down boys. As soon as the draw was made, they knew they were going to be up against it, having to go to, to, to Celtic Park again. And Derry, I suppose, had revenge on their minds. Uh, quite a few times throughout the back door, myself and I was playing with Derry. You know, 0-1 with Tyrone and 0-8 with Monaghan. You know, we overturned uh, Ulster semi-final defeats to go on and meet them teams again, the qualifiers, and beat them. So I think everything's looking in Fermanagh's favour. I covered that game uh, for the TV. That 
that day and Fermanagh didn't score for the first 25 minutes in Bristol Park. I don't think that's going to happen this time around. Calvin under Terry Highland have made great progress, but I think you know Cal and Fermanagh are going down there, they've revenge in their minds, and I think after a brilliant victory down in Westmeath, not a lot of people thought they could go down to Westmeath and get that one. I think that uh, Fermanagh for me are, are favourites and could shade that one. I wouldn't be surprised to see that game going to extra time. Paddy, I was going to just uh, mention it there whenever you raise the issue, you know, uh, teams that have met each other in the champ. I know the qualifiers are not perfect and the championship's not perfect and everybody wants to talk about all the changes in the championship that there is but uh, it doesn't seem to be the ideal situation that teams that have already met in their provincial championship can meet again so quickly in the qualifier. It doesn't and I know if the GA has tried this you know, a few years ago that there was a case whenever you drew somebody that you'd played you couldn't draw them again until at least an all Ireland quarter final and probably they took that out for whatever reason but look the, the, the back door obviously to me has been a success you know it gives you know smaller counties the chance to get another game yeah you're right there's a lot of stuff been written and talked about over the last while about the format of the championship and should it be changed and I do have my own opinions on that I think it could be changed but look the back door it looks like it's here to stay for the time being possibly they could bring in that rule again whereby teams can't meet somebody so quick again that they've already played but look that's only a small thing uh, I'm sure you know <laughs> like said, Derry and Brian McEver were, were actually, you know, he would never say it publicly, but he was delighted whenever he drew down again because he knew he had nothing to do to get them Derry players up for that match. And it's the same this weekend with, with Peter Cannon and from Lots. They'll know they didn't perform in Bristol Park. You know, they'll have revenge in their minds and it'll be very, very easy for them to get up for this game at the weekend. You talk about the changes to the championship and your own opinions. Like that. I remember almost, what, 15 years ago on end to end. Uh, on UTV and we talked about a change of championship format then and now people are coming in with the ideas which are not new the Champions League style thing and then you know the plate for the bottom 16 yeah. teams and stuff like that yeah. and then people are now trying to accommodate the provincial championship it's not perfect but how come we always want to try and change our game you don't hear changes for soccer for the sake of it but we want to change Gaelic almost every other week yeah I think probably the reason behind this upsurge and people wanting to change is the fact that everybody thinks that the top three or four teams are pulling away and there's like a begin to a two or three tier championship you know sort of emerging like I think most people will agree that the likes of Donegal and Dublin and Mayo are way out in their own you know coming behind then you have maybe teams like you know Tyrone and uh, the likes of Kildare, Cork, Kerry and that and then you know behind that you've got you know maybe 15 or 16 teams so I think that's probably the reason why we've seen this upsurge and support for a change in championship you know it's not perfect you know, but at the end of the day, the championship works, the crowds are still coming. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of talk about the defensive systems and stuff at the minute and the way football's been played and maybe it's not as entertaining as it could be. But look, that's one thing about the back door, you would say that whenever teams are in the back door, they sort of tend to drop their defensive strategy and just go out and sort of play a game of football and just give it a lash. And that's probably the one big positive of the qualifiers is the fact that teams go out and play, you know, without any tactics, they just go out and try and win. And I think it was, was it two weekends ago, the average uh, score in each game, the teams were scoring 15 to 16 points. It was fantastic. Now you talk about uh, some of the lesser teams and I know nobody in Meath will appreciate that but they're one of the lesser teams now and they go into the Lions Den to Croke Park to face a Dublin side who never leave Croke Park, play every championship game in Croke Park and they're nailed on favours to win the Leicester title. Yeah, serious advantage Dublin have playing in Croke Park but look that's just something that I suppose Meath will have to deal with. Um, in fairness, Meath and all the other teams in Leinster get plenty of run outs in Crook Park. I know as, as a former Derry footballer, that's one of the, the big things that sort of doesn't sit too well with me is the fact that they didn't get to play in Crook Park enough times. It's a fantastic stadium, fantastic venue, and probably us Ulster teams don't get enough games there. But you know, Meath are really up against it this weekend. You've seen Dublin against Kildare. You know, every time they attack, they look to score a goal, and that's the one thing more so that Dublin have and possess. Uh, more so than the other team, you know they can cut teams, you know, to shreds. Um, Meath, as you say, aren't one of the top four or five teams in the country now. They've sort of had to, had to come to terms with that. They've had the problems over the years with with managers and that, but they seem to be settled at the minute. They are going well. They'll be happy to be back in a Leinster final. But I think you know there's no chance that, that Meath might uh, you know beat Dublin this weekend. I think Dublin are nailed on to win that uh, Leinster title again. And you know for me they are the favourites for the All Ireland.